Hi, I'm Eric Johnson here at Vanderbilt University. I'm here with Roger McNamee. Roger is an investor and a best-selling author, uh, founder of Silver Lake Partners, Integral Partners, Elevation Partners, and author of the new book, Zucked. And he's here today to talk uh, a little bit about that book. Welcome, Roger. Thanks. Good to see you, Eric. Roger, you were an early investor in Facebook, uh, mentors to the executive team, a very early adopter of the platform. I can remember uh, yeah. you were live streaming your band on Facebook. Uh, the first Facebook. day, literally the yeah, first day. Yeah, long had. before anybody even knew what live streaming was. Uh, but a few years ago, you started to notice some of the dark side of yeah. the platform and uh, have been out talking about that now. Why, why raise the alarm now? So, Eric, I've been an investor in Silicon Valley since 1982, and it would be hard to find a greater technology optimist or a more true believer than myself. And it was because I had been such a supporter of technology, and particularly of Facebook, where I'd been lucky enough to meet Mark in 2006 when the company was two years old and he was 22, and to help him with some really important problems in those days. You know, I'd become a huge fan. And then in 2016, after I'd retired from the investment business, I was quietly minding my own business, I started to see some things that didn't fit my understanding of what being on Facebook should be about. Effectively, I noticed that the advertising tools and the business model allowed bad actors to, do, to use the same tools created that are so effective for marketers, but to use them to harm innocent people. And that initially caught me off guard. And then as I saw more and more examples of it, some of them were about civil rights violations, some of the things occurred uh, in the Democratic primary and then in the United Kingdom in their referendum to leave the European Union, what's called yeah. Brexit. Yeah. And I see all these things and I wrote an opinion piece for a tech blog, which I sent to Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg, my friends, uh, at the end of October of 2016. So I'm not even thinking about the 2016 election, but I sent it to them because I thought they were the victims of an inadvertent flaw in the product and that they really need to get on top of it. Sadly, they treat it like a public relations problem rather than a business issue. Now, in fairness, I didn't have good data. I had a spidey sense and a long personal relationship with them. So what I was hopeful was that they would give me the benefit of the doubt and at least do the investigation. And after the election, I spent three months trying to persuade them to protect their brand by leaping to the defense of the people yeah. who use the product yeah. and, and, and just understanding that there's a right way to handle a crisis like that and it's not to pretend it didn't happen. They didn't respond. They kept retreating behind the safe harbor of a law that says that they're a platform, not a media company. And after three months, I realized they were never gonna move and I started looking for allies and because I, I realized that there was nothing to prevent election interference in U.S. democracy or other democracies. There was nothing to prevent harm to the public health of kids or adults. You know, I learned there was nothing to protect us from invasions of our privacy. And there was the ever-present threat to our economy from suppressing innovation because you're suppressing the startup community. And as I learned more about it, it became obvious that I need to speak out. And... That was a really hard decision because it, it, it was maybe my proudest moment was Facebook. And so to become a critic was not a natural, organic thing for me. It was very hard. But it was one of those things where my moment came and I realized if I'm not going to stand up and speak out on this, mm -hmm. something where I was an active participant, something where I had, I had benefited economically from their success, if I wasn't going to speak about that, what would I stand for? And so... I set out to try to make this an issue the public would be aware of. And you're hinting at this. It's not just a Facebook issue, but is this something about the tech industry itself? Well, here's the thing. Parts of the problem are in the architecture of the Internet itself. Those of us who were around when the Internet got going uh, owe everybody an apology because we should have built identity into the basic architecture of the Internet internet. Anonymity has turned out to be a horrible thing because it allows bullies and, and bad actors to harm innocent people and get away with it. And the architecture of the internet itself allows them to find each other and therefore amplify the worst elements of society. Well, last question. Does the 
new kind of privacy manifesto that Zuckerberg has put out uh, give you any hope that uh, Facebook is going to no. do better? No. So there are two aspects of, of the thing. One part of it I really like, which is Mark has, has promised that Facebook will no longer host data or do business in countries that have a bad track record of uh, either human rights or privacy invasions, which means no China, no Vietnam, and I would argue no Philippines. But we'll see what happens. Um, if he follows through on that, that's a really big deal. I mean, that would be the first time in Facebook's history that they gave up a business opportunity over a matter of principle, and I would be in the front row to cheer. If the 2020 election gives us an opportunity to, to meet with people who are running for office at every level, city council, mayor, state legislature, state senate, house, senate, president, and we should, everyone should go and ask anybody running, what are you going to do to stop the trade of my most personal data? What are you going to do to stop the trading of my credit card transaction data, my location, my health data, my browsing history? What are you going to do to protect children? What are you going to do to stop people from spying on my email and my, uh, and my business applications? We can all participate in that because these guys are all need our vote. And what I have found is this is not a right versus left issue. I'm spending a ton of time on Fox. I'm spending a ton of time on MSNBC. It turns out roughly even. I'm spending a ton of time with the administration, working with the antitrust division of the Justice Department, working with the FTC. I'm working with members of Congress on both sides. This is an issue of right versus wrong. And what I've found is almost everybody's on the same side here. And this is our data. It's our lives. We're entitled to be in control. And I would just encourage everybody who's watching this to remember that because we're not going to have to give up the apps we like. That's the weird thing. It's not like these guys are going to stop giving <laughs> us the apps. They're just going to stop harming us with them. And that would be a big change. Well, you certainly gave us a lot to think about today. My pleasure. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure.